Hi there. In this video, I'll be answering a question about resolving vectors. That's basically the opposite of vector addition, where we split the vector into its horizontal and vertical components. This is a question from the 2019 CFE Hire paper. A student abseils down the outside of a building using a rope. The mass of the student is 55 kilograms. The rope of negligible mass is attached to a fixed point X at the top of the building. The rope makes an angle of 15 degrees to the building. <laughs> are you quite finished? There are people actually watching this video who are studying for the physics exam and you want to swing about in that rope of negligible mass. Unbelievable. Anyway, the question then asks us to calculate the weight W of the student. <sighs> so, of course, we're using this equation where the weight W is equal to mass M times gravitational field strength G. G is found from the data sheet to the start of the paper as the gravitational acceleration on Earth, 9.8 ms to the minus 2, and gravitational field strength in newtons per kilogram is numerically equal to this value. That gives us 55 times 9.8, which is equal to 539 newtons, or, to two significant figures, 540 newtons. Here's part B of the question. Determine the tension T in the rope. So I'll move the student off to the side so that I can explain this one. Here's the tension force which can be split up into its vertical component and its horizontal component. Note that the components are drawn with one arrow and the tension force which is being resolved split into its components is drawn with two arrows. Now hopefully you'll also see that this angle between the tension force and its vertical component is 15 degrees. It's maybe easier if I draw this dotted line which represents the wall. Since the angle between the wall, which is vertical, and the tension force is 15 degrees, it follows that it's also 15 degrees between the tension force and its vertical component. The two are what's called Z angles. We'll label this vector as T, the tension. This one is TV, the vertical component of tension, and this as TH, the horizontal component of the tension force. If that student's stationary, then the forces acting on them must be balanced. That also means that the horizontal forces acting on them are balanced and the vertical forces acting on them are balanced. And we already know one of the vertical forces acting on the student, the weight force, which we were asked to calculate in part A. It follows then that the vertical component of tension, TV, is equal in size to the student's weight, but opposite in direction. We can use this fact to help us calculate the answer here. It's time for a bit of trigonometry. If we look at the right angle triangle that's been drawn, we can see that the cosine of the angle is equal to TV divided by T. We can rearrange this to make tension T the subject by multiplying both sides by T, then dividing both sides by cos theta, giving us T is equal to TV over cos theta. As I said before, the vertical forces acting in the student are balanced. So the vertical component of the tension force, TV, is equal in size to the weight, an angle theta is 15 degrees. So T is equal to 540 divided by cos 15, which is 559 newtons, or to two significant figures, 560 newtons. Just make sure that your calculator's set to degrees rather than radians, otherwise you'll get some weird answer here and lose yourself a mark. Let's take a look at part C of the question. As the student abseils down the building, the angle the rope makes with the building decreases. State whether the tension in the rope increases, decreases, or stays the same. Justify your answer. Let's go. Since we have a right angle triangle, it follows that T squared is equal to TV squared plus TH squared. The vertical component is also going to be constant, since it's equal to the weight of the student, which isn't changing. As the angle decreases, it should be clear enough to see that the horizontal component of the tension force will decrease, which must mean that the tension force itself will decrease. So we could write something like this. Tension decreases as the angle decreases since the horizontal component of tension decreases. Here's another way of answering the same question. Now you should be familiar with this graph of cos theta against angle theta from your maths lessons. As angle theta increases from zero to 90 degrees, you can see that cos theta is decreasing from a value of one down to zero. As theta decreases from 90 to 0 degrees, cos theta increases from 0 up to 1. So remember this. Cos theta increases 
as theta decreases, which is true for angles between 0 and 90 degrees. Previously we used this equation to calculate the tension force in the rope. So when the angle decreases, cos theta increases, which means that the tension force decreases. We could explain it like so. Tension decreases because cos theta increases as the angle theta decreases. That's not easy to say. Now since I care so much about your education, unlike that student who wasted your time earlier, I'll show you one last way to answer this part of the question. Here's the answer we got for part B of the question where we were asked to calculate tension T in the rope. All we have to do is calculate tension again for a smaller angle, so that we're justifying by calculation. I'm going to pick an angle of 10 degrees, which gives us a tension force of 548 newtons, or to two significant figures, 550 newtons. The final part is to state that tension decreases as the angle decreases. If you struggle to understand the first two explanations for part C, then you might want to go for this method when a similar question comes up. So if you haven't subscribed by now, then this is the perfect time. Or maybe, now is the perfect time. Or maybe, now. Remember to click the bell icon too, so that you're made aware when new videos are released. See you next time.